also a warm welcome from my side. Um, as I go through the presentation, I will try to remember to call out the slide numbers since some of the participants uh, are not here and joining us by phone. So I am on um, actually slide two, growing energy demand, social, economic, and environmental impacts. Slide three, I think we all know and have read so many times about the global energy demand uh, rising. The forecast is that it will rise by 35 percent through 2035. Much of this uh, energy demand will be coming from emerging and developing markets. Now there is energy demand, there is also electricity demand. And if you notice on the charts here, the darker blue, which represents the growth in electricity demand, actually exceeds the energy demand uh, over, the next, uh, over the next years in terms of growth. And if you, um, one of the recent statistics has come out that in 2035, China will, their energy, uh, excuse me, electricity demand will be equivalent to that of the United States and all of European Union. So it's quite significant. Sorry, how many years? By 2035. So economic growth and energy consumption go hand in hand. They're basically in parallel. Now, you can reduce the link between economic growth and energy consumption through energy efficiency. You can also reduce the link between economic growth and greenhouse gas emissions through renewables. And in some cases, you could potentially uh, break that link completely. And these are some very strong factors for slide number five, solar PV, being a long-term sustainable industry. Moving to slide number six. Again, looking further ahead, solar will be a key contributor to the global energy mix and especially to the uh, global electricity capacity mix. It will be the fastest growing sector. As a matter of fact, by 2035, it is said to be equivalent to that of nuclear capacity. Slide seven. PV will experience tremendous growth in the years to come. And one of the key factors uh, of driving that growth is actually the drivers. There's a shift from traditional drivers to um, new drivers that we have seen. Historical drivers, as we all know, have been incentives. They've been uh, renewable energy targets and environmental concerns. Over the last couple of years, we have seen a tremendous shift to some new drivers. Obviously, increasing power demand in emerging markets and developing countries. There is also a need for uh, a balance in the energy mix globally and in different countries. Um, preservation of fossil fuel for export, that's an economic driver for many of the countries that are currently the largest uh, oil producers and exporters in the world. Energy independence, access to electricity, there are many new initiatives that are uh, globally being led. Uh, for access to electricity in Africa, in India, in other parts of the world. Grid parity, which I will explain in just a couple of minutes, uh, we will, which will create a, a uh, shift in paradigm. And also economic viability. Solar uh, cost, uh, solar photovoltaic specifically, solar PV cost has, uh, has decreased tremendously over the last uh, few years. Slide eight. Solar is becoming, solar PV is becoming increasingly more competitive. You look at it, the source is free. So there's absolutely no price volatility that's related to the source itself. And when a plant uh, is, is, uh, starts producing for a 20 year period, you can pretty much predict what the output of that plant is going to be in a given region. Since 2009, the average cost of a solar PV system has declined by more than 50%. In that same time frame, oil prices have increased by 36%. Another factor is that average electricity prices globally have risen. An example for US, according to sources, is that electricity prices on average have risen 42% since 2003. 
And I recently learned that in September, in fact, in California, electricity prices went up by 12%. So these are very significant drivers in terms of deployment of, of solar. The other driver, as I mentioned earlier, is grid parity. What is grid parity? It, this occurs actually when the cost of solar generation, um, solar generated electricity, is competitive with that of traditional fossil fuel sources. This is really tremendous. This is, this is very big. Slide number nine. How does grid parity change the paradigm? We've seen this already happening, the surge in self-consumption. In many countries in the world, it's actually, even with incentives, it's actually more economic, economical to generate solar and self-consume it than feed it back into the grid. If you look at this chart from the top to the bottom, you see that currently there are a number of countries, Germany, Italy, state of Hawaii, where because of higher electricity prices, and also you have to take the amount of irradiation, sun irradiation into account, um, along with system costs, these, these regions and countries have already reached grid parity. Within the next couple of years, we'll see more countries joining the, uh, the grid parity phase. And some industry experts are actually predicting that by 2020, solar will become competitive in more than 70% of the world for residential and commercial applications. This is where the competition is retail electricity prices. For the so-called grid parity in Germany, I mean that's only due to the fact that it's heavily subsidized, no? This chart actually from um, um, from Bloomberg, it's not based on subsidies. These are without subsidies. Their calculations are without subsidies. Now, solar is great. It's wonderful. Has a lot of benefits, but it is not without its challenges. Obviously, one challenge is when the sun goes down, there is no power generation. The other challenge is, just like all other renewables, for example, wind, solar is also an intermittent source, which means that you really have to have uh, a very strong grid and, in a way, be able to integrate the energy into the grid so that the stability of the grid is not compromised. Now, there are challenges, but the good news is that there are solutions. And they are technology related, in fact. For example, <clears throat> you will have energy storage that, as it becomes more economically viable, you can use it for balancing supply and demand, as well as being able to use it as an alternate source of power after dark. Integration of renewables into the grid, solar inverters, are very, very key in that because they manage the local system at generation and they're also the interface to the grid and this is intelligent interface and communications to the grid. There's also smart grids. Smart grids are, is a system level solution where your, the technology is looking at advanced forecasting and lo, uh, load and demand balancing and planning. So you bring all of this together and now integration of renewables into the grid is addressed. Slide 11. I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a very critical component of a solar PV system, and that's the inverter. In fact, it's so critical that it can affect the rate of adoption of, uh, of solar uh, globally. It's used for utility scale for residential and commercial, and also for off-grid applications. It has some very key functions, and you can say there's really three key functions that an inverter has. One is it converts direct current to alternating current, because the PV modules actually generate direct current, and what we use in our household is alternating current. So that's the first thing that they do. The second thing that they do is that they're monitoring and managing the local PV system. If you have a home, they're managing the entire system uh, from the module to where the generation, from generation to actually load. 
The other thing that they do is they're the interface to the grid. And that's another intelligence level that you're now working with. So there are really three key areas that, that the inverters are, are uh, bring a lot of value to the PV system. Interestingly enough, the inverters also are the part where the innovation has to continually happen. There are a lot of disciplines that it takes to um, develop inverters, and especially as the requirements continue to increase, for example, for new applications, uh, for grid codes requirement. Every country, every region has a different grid code requirement. It has a different safety code requirement. And these are challenges that you can actually overcome and address with the inverter. It takes disciplines such as power electronics, which as you know, ABB, this is the heart of what we do, power electronics, communications, etc. <coughs> also because it's the core component, the brain and the heart of a PV system, reliability is very, very key. And therefore, you have to have reliable products, reliable innovation, and also have the service uh, component that, that can support it. <coughs>